Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this uh, continuation of the Flanders Classics here on uh, Flow Bikes. My name is Randy Ferguson. I'll be with uh, Audrey Lemieux. Well, uh, Audrey, today it's the Chel de Pris, uh, as they call it. It is the continuation of this uh, week of uh, celebrating the uh, classics here in and around Flanders. Uh, it's actually a pretty agreeable morning for the riders, Audrey. Yes, uh, it is uh, not so bad uh, uh, as uh, the weather uh, looks like it's sunny out there, not too cold uh, like the previous uh, years. And we got to take a look for sure at Lorena with us, who has been winning two years in a row. So that's going to be the big favorite today. Yeah, and not only has she won the last two years, but with Team DSM, she has now joined the powerhouse Team SD Works with Lota Kopecki, Marlene Reusser, Misha Bredevold, and to name a few. Also, you can throw in there Demi Follering. And a lot of teams over the last uh, couple of weeks have seen that they are really the force to reckon with, Audrey. And uh, even Movistar mentioning that they are looking to change their strategies for the upcoming races to beat, finally, Team SD Works. Yeah, that's going to be great to see if they are able to beat that team because this team has been dominating, especially uh, since the uh, classic season has been started. Uh, and uh, we saw it as well at the Tour of Flanders uh, this weekend. So today will be a day for uh, Arena Vives without any question. So that's a matter of which strategy that they are the other team will use because they have to find a way to beat this team they, they, this is the today is a good day for that yeah well they'll be looking uh, to have some competition uh, we will be looking to some of their favorites uh, such as phoenix ducanex sane kant we also have a uh, team dsm with the new leader uh, charlotte cool uae with uh, chiara consoni who didn't win uh, uh, again at uh, the uh, race uh, last week, but uh, was uh, back uh, on the podium at least. Uh, Raquel Barbieri from Live Racing. We saw a few moments ago uh, Simone Boilard from Saint Michel Mavic Aubert 93 will be another uh, crowd favorite and also uh, one of the young riders to look for as uh, Boilard is back racing in Europe. Right there on the screen, another. Uh, team that can with Consoni make a difference and uh, once again we're looking at uh, the uh, team Jaco Ulala with uh, Teniel Campbell a, a former member of uh, the UCI World Cycling Center and uh, she uh, is racing here for the first time yes and now this is the leave team as well as uh, Simone Boilard, like you mentioned. She was there last year and she was also part of the uh, breakaway that lasts yep. uh, almost till the end. So it's going to be interesting to see what will be her strategy. We know she can finish strong. She has a good uh, speed in terms of uh, punch sprint. So maybe this uh, year she will just wait and stay on this girl's wheel, Romana Vivas, and try to, to podium. Why not? Simone Boilard has everything that uh, she needs uh, to be on the podium. So Vibes uh, wearing the uh, triple blue band and golden star European champion jersey. All right there. And SD Works, as we said, showing up with Predevold, who did all the work uh, for following uh, uh, during uh, the uh, race last week. Barbara Garici is also there. Marlene Reusser, Femke Marcus, and Loneke Uniken. Well, this was uh, the start a little while ago, Audrey, as the race has been underway uh, for about 48 minutes. We are going to pick them up live in a few seconds. So uh, the uh, course that will be uh, taking them around Shoten, back to Shoten, uh, is a very interesting one. We'll see it in a few moments, and Audrey, you can give us uh, the details. So there was uh, the official start. It was about 2.5 three kilometers of neutral racing on this a relatively nice day in flanders exactly and uh the bunch uh, the field was still a bunched up uh, already on 
and uh, the pace was pretty fast and here's the course like mentioned Randy so uh, the uh, 2023 Echelle de Bridge will start and finish once again in Shotton it will be 131.5 K and uh, first they will take the riders towards Bratch where the wind can play a crucial role we're gonna talk about it a bit further later on uh, because there will be some open space in the uh, north of Belgium. Once back in Schotten, the peloton will face three finishing circuit of 17k each. So that's going to be interesting and it will be also some uh, cobblestone section uh, and uh, five of them like last year and that will be uh, a good place to try something and uh, to not uh, bring the pure sprinter with you. And that's uh, what it's going to look like. Uh, the, uh, the course in, uh, right now, with 84k to go, we have an attack from the uh, RKA team. Uh, so that's not too early. That's a good moment to create a scenario. Yep. And uh, it, uh, they started this morning. One rider down, Lucie Libero, did not take to the start. And it looks like Lotto Destiny also getting involved here. As you said, 83 kilometers. You said something very important when you were talking about the course to Audrey, uh, trying to not bring the sprinters to the line. One that must be reminded, if you haven't seen the profile of this race, contrary to some of the other uh, Flanders classics or semi-classics, um, there are no real climbs per se in this race only. No, exactly. It's a uh, pancake flat. Uh, the only uh, thing that you have to look at is the wind. They could have some crosswind section like last year. They were trying to do echelon on some part of the, the course. So that could be an important place to uh, split things up. And also you have to look at the cobblestone section where it's always tricky. We know we saw it uh, Tour de Flan, we saw it as well uh, uh, a little bit uh, earlier last week uh, in Dwar's Door of Landeran. So those things will be the key. And also all the team can control as much as they want if they want a bunch sprint, especially as the works. That's the thing. They will always make things happen to bring it in one big field to the line because they has way more chances to win it with Laura Vives today. Well, things have calmed down once again after that short attack by the riders. And once again, I love that expression. It is pancake flat. It's You can't describe it any better. <laughs> and they are off on this midweek semi-classic. And up till now, it's been pretty quiet over these uh, first uh, 49, almost 50 minutes of racing. Yeah, especially uh, since it has started, uh, there was some little bit little attempt to break away just like we saw uh, a few seconds ago. But uh, other than this, everybody's together it's been uh, already one hour and ten minutes of racing and uh, everybody is uh, still in uh, one big bunch third edition of this uh, women's Preis, as they call it and uh, only one winner the last two years Lorena Vibis so not a lot of history on the women's side and it looks like Audrey already some riders are really struggling to stay in contact with the main bunch. It is pretty fast uh, right now, as we saw in the uh, little uh, town that uh, they are going through. Um, since we started, they started the race. Uh, they have been completed 40k and the average speed is 34.2. Yeah, so I have a funny feeling, like, depending on where they are out on course, and as you said, as the wind plays in, how it will affect the speeds. I'm trying to get a uh, local uh, wind report or weather report to see if they are reporting. They were showing little gusts on our early preview as we uh, came on uh, to broadcast, but nothing since. 
Well, we'll be keeping an eye out for some of the flags around uh, the course. But right now, it is uh, really tempo. Everybody uh, riding at the front from uh, left to right side of the road. That's Marta Romance. Uh, or actually, no, that's Deborah Silvestri, uh, 244. She rides for the Zaf Cycling Team, the team of Canadian Maggie Coles Lister. Um, a bit of a crisis happening with the Zaf uh, there this uh, week, Audrey, as they lost probably their most important rider. Yeah, exactly. We saw that in the news uh, this week. It's uh, Audrey Cordon Hago who decided to quit the team. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, with an immediate effect uh, because she didn't receive her salary and uh, there was no way she would have waited any longer. Uh, she decided to uh, close the door on them and uh, she said after that uh, many things contacted her. So uh, that's that's a bad news for the Zaf cycling team because, uh, as you mentioned, there is a Canadian in there, Maggie Coles Lister, who is really strong. And actually, today could be a great day for her. She's very, very, very fast on the uh, big bunch uh, sprint finish like that. And also, there was another rider, uh, Nicola. Uh, she was very strong earlier in uh, Australia racing, especially on the climb. So. It looks like they had a lot of uh, great results since the beginning of the year, but unfortunately, uh, on the uh, internal uh, facilities, there was not uh, great uh, chemistry, and Audrey Cordon decided to leave immediately. Yeah, and it was kind of uh, Audrey Cordon's way of turning the page after a very uh, scary uh, finale to her season last year. If you remember, at the end of the season, we see as we see Live Racing's uh, uh, Danielle Campbell. Um, she had a stroke uh, just a few weeks before Worlds. Uh, feeling unwell after a race, she collapsed. And uh, she was uh, okay. Was uh, taken uh, under medical supervision immediately. Was okay. And uh, was really looking at turning the page during the season. But it doesn't look like uh, it's going to happen. As we see Sané Kante from the Phoenix Ducanenque outfit. So, yeah. Bad news, but Audrey cordon Rago, uh, that you know very well, Audrey, you raced against her, yeah. uh, has said that uh, she does have probably some offers from other teams coming up in the next few weeks. Yeah, exactly. And it was very scary what she uh, went through last year at the end of the season. She said that she almost died. Uh, so uh, it uh, changed a little bit her thinking since... Uh, you, you go through uh, difficult stuff like that. Another attack here from the uh, Lotto Destiny's ladies and uh, chasing uh, on the bunch, it is the uh, Archaea team. And uh, there is a few attacks like that. The pace is quite fast. See, we are a little bit on the uh, more open road. There is a speed zone section here. Nobody wants to take it because it's fast. When it's fast like that, you have to make a decision. Uh, do I take a feed zone at uh, 50, 55 kilo an hour, or I decide to just stay on the wheel and stay safe? Because uh, this uh, feed zone uh, wasn't well placed. So they are looking at each other. That's uh, the biggest gap we had so far. There is yep. another rider trying to bridge um, in between the, those two groups. And everybody is looking at, at each other. They don't want to go. Uh, we see that Arkea Samsik really wants to... Sorry, Arkea. Arkea Samsik is for uh, the men's team, men's side. Uh, we see that Arkea are very aggressive. They want to put someone in the break. But right now what they are doing is they are bringing all the fill with them. So it's better to just try to make the junction like uh, the rider is uh, doing right now in between those two groups. But the gap is very small right now. Yeah, it's just... Uh, I don't know if we can call it a gap. I usually try to call it a gap after the... Time is up and above 20 seconds, but I don't think we're quite there yet, Ole. But looks like the bunch is not reacting anymore. Nobody is uh, moving out. 
So we may have our first early break of the day in this uh, women's Shell de Prise. Third edition for the women. Will we have a new winner this year after two wins by Lorena Vibes? So as we said, Simone Boilard, the Canadian with Saint-Michel Mavic Aubert 93. We have Maggie Cole Listers with uh, Zaf Cycling and uh, a young lady from uh, the region of uh, Montreal with Team Grandes Kamogi La Fabrique is Josephine Peloquin is also part of the race. Exactly. That's good to see her on the race, in the race, I should say. Uh, Josephine Peloquin and also with uh, Laurie Millette. So both are... Um, from uh, Quebec, those, those are uh, the uh, Canadian rider part of the race, as well as uh, Simone Boileau, who uh, we mentioned earlier. But uh, it's it's a great way to uh, gain experience in the European scene for Josephine Pelleke and Laurie Millet. Uh, I'm really happy to see them uh, there. We have um, been uh, seen them racing, but this year. It's, it's a great way on this course, especially it's going to be a tough fight in the peloton. We are expecting this race to finish on a bunch sprint, so it's great to just work on your positioning on the field, uh, to work on changing uh, speed, because as we've seen, as we've been seeing since the first um, few uh, moments when we went on air, it's stop and go. The, 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 the pace is going really fast, then it slows down. Fast, slow down. So when you are there to gain experience, the positioning is the key. And also another thing that it's very important to mention is the, the roads, sometimes they are wide, then you take a, a left or a right corner, and then boom, you are on a very narrow road. So you need to be well positioned ahead of those uh, little uh, tricky roads like that, when you know that there is going to be some uh, changing of the uh, narrowing or wider road. So we have our two breakaways identified in Mieke Dux, 163 for uh, Lotto Destiny ladies, and 233 uh, riding for uh, Team Top Girls of Fasa Bortolo is Alice Palazzi, is look what they, uh, look like they are announcing out on the uh, road right now. So yeah, Millet, uh, Millet and Peloquin, the two young Quebecers riding for Team Grand Est Komogi, Great to see uh, them uh, moving up the Pilaquin Road uh, during a pandemic for a Dutch team with Adele Degagné and now moving over to Team Grand S. So voila, Miet and uh, Pilaquin there with uh, Maggie Cole's sister, first Canadian, first junior Canadian to win a uh, world title on the track. And uh, a surprising, uh, Odie, or maybe not, uh, no women's movie star on this uh, race. Looks like they're putting uh, everything on the table for this weekend's Paris-Roubaix. Exactly. And same as uh, Trek Segafredo uh, yep. as well. No team here today because, uh, yeah, we have to, to mention it. This uh, weekend will be uh, Paris-Roubaix. And uh, for sure, they will be uh, targeting a victory there. And uh, for Movie Star, that was a rough day on uh, Tour of Flanders. Oof. Uh, because yeah, they lost her their um, their leader, Annemiek van Vleuten, who uh, unfortunately was uh, crashed, was uh, involved in a crash um, on the side of the road. She uh, completely slipped, and uh, she was okay. She went back on her bike, but then after it was uh, not possible to catch because that was just before uh, the biggest climb uh, that were coming up on the Tour of Flanders. So unfortunately, they lost her there. And then after, when the, when they went on the uh, the climb and then uh, Lotto Kopecky attacked, uh, we saw Leanne Lepert having big problem, big issue with her uh, bike, dropping the chain, uh, wasn't able to put the chain back on till uh, everyone wa was gone in, were gone in the breakaway. So they kind of uh, were all over the place, unfortunately. So I'm pretty sure they want to uh, be back stronger this weekend for Paris-Roubaix. 
Yeah, the uh, Tour of Flanders, uh, Ron van Vlaanderen this year was just chaos, maybe in the women's or men's race. For those of you that watched the men's race also, wow, that was just a, a, a crazy show. But once again, both races turning into epics with uh, two athletes uh, putting their names into the history books with uh, Pogacar becoming, uh, joining Eddie Merckx in a very select club as uh, Tour de France winners and then winning the Tour of Flanders uh, within a year. And Lota Kopecky, uh, she, uh, well, basically saved face for the Belgians as she won her second Tour de France. And that in itself is not an easy feat, Audrey. No, and she said uh, after, um, in, her, uh, in her interview after the race, she said, well, everybody was talking about me. I was in all headlines of all magazines. And she said, yes, the pressure was on. I felt the pressure because she was a big favorite and she's from Belgium. And you know what it means? That crowd is insane over there. Um, but she did it. She, she, she did it back to back and in, in a way that she completely dominate all the other riders that was impressive and this year Lotpo Piki she she's just on a completely other level she's so yeah. strong uh, I think she's even climbing better than she used to and uh, don't forget that on the track she's winning everything as well so she's such a complete rider uh, it's beautiful to see her ride and even like she she went through tough time as well um, a couple of weeks ago, she lost her brother, um, so that was pretty sad. And it looks like she's just turning all this sadness into power on the pedal, and it's it, it's incredible. And uh, also, they have the team. We we mentioned it many yeah. times, but she she did something pretty amazing. That's for sure. One information that I have not been able to find as we see some of the local castles here in and around Schotten, uh, just a reminder, we are in that area, just uh, a few kilometers uh, to the um, west, if I'm not mistaken, of Antwerp, uh, we are today. Um, one rider, we're not one rider, but one uh, very important component to Team SD Works last year and the year before um, was uh, one of uh, the greatest riders of all time. And we haven't heard much about, um, and I'm going to have a... I'm going to have a, a, a brain blip here. I, I'm looking for her name. I'll get back to you on that one. But uh, they have been definitely uh, one of the how could I say, most dominant outfits uh, in women's cycling over the last decade, for sure. Yes, that's uh, pretty impressive. And uh, it looks like we lost the image of the field. Yes, or I think so. It's been a while that we haven't had um, the uh, image of uh, all the field and also the uh, small breakaway that was on. But uh, I guess we're going to have them shortly. That's exactly what I was. Uh, it uh, took my attention off what I was trying to. Anna van der Bregen is the person I was talking about. And we haven't heard much about Anna. She uh, has been in the car, but recently it's been more Lars Boom that has been uh, directing uh, the women in some of these races. Yes, good point. And also Chantal van der Broek Black was there yep. as well. Uh, especially in Dwarsdor uh, Vlanderen, uh, Chantal van der Broek Black and uh, Lars Boom were uh, the one who uh, um, dictated the, the, the strategy. And Demi Voring, uh, after that race, when she, uh, she won, she uh, posted a picture and said, those are the uh, architect of that victory because yeah. she really gave them, uh, gave them uh, credit uh, because that was impressive. Those uh, strategies that oh, they've been God. using, that was special. That was something special. And I think, yeah, like you said, uh, Anna van der Bregen, I guess she's there uh, in... Um, some races but me too i haven't heard of her lately and oh, oh and a crash. a crash here yeah the road pinched just slightly there but it looks like Audrey, everybody is back up and on the bikes never like uh, seeing that uh, that's uh tat 
who uh, is for the Israel Premier or Premier Tech Roland, because I've been told that Premier Tech is uh, the proper way to pronounce, as it is a uh, company here from Quebec. One of the riders uh, struggling slightly to get things up and going again. That's uh, Marine Allion from Stade Rochelet, Charente Maritime. There's only four of them uh, part of this race. Yeah, so back to uh, Van de Breggen, a, a great champion in her rights. As you say, maybe she's uh, more uh, playing uh, the uh, behind-the-scenes uh, strength role with that team. But Lord knows that over these uh, last couple of years, they have just become the powerhouse and uh, taking uh, the wind out of the sails of a lot of teams in a lot of races because we've had success by Royce, we've had success by uh, Vibes, we've had success by following, we've had success, you know, it just keeps on going with Lota Kopecki last week. So uh, once again, as we said early on in the broadcast, as we we're looking down at the Gelmen Linhof in Schrotten, uh, they uh, have put a lot of pressure on all the other teams. And uh, as we said, some teams even stating publicly in the media that they are going back to the drawing board because this just can't keep on going. We can't let uh, Team DS, uh, Team SD Works uh, dominate so badly and uh, take away a lot of success and prize money in the in the running. <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, yeah, and Avanda Bregan, like uh, we all know, she was one of the best riders in the world, one of the top uh, Olympic uh, gold medalist, Olympic champion, world champion, both in, in uh, road race and the time trial. And uh, she was seeing when she is in the car as a team uh, director that it's a different kind of adrenaline. Uh, she said that. Yes, you're really focused to do well, but it's not about her personal limits, but it's about being trying to make right decision. That's all it matters. And she said, when I'm in the car, that's the only thing I can do. So it's not like before where she can just add another gear, push the watts and make something uh, huge out of it. But now in the car, that's all about making the right decision and tell the right thing to her rider and big big uh, group here trying to escape uh, Randy that that looks good yep. now yeah well, as you were talking about huge decisions this looks like a huge decision right here and uh, it may be the group that moves away but a lot of teams behind are not liking the look of this as they are chasing really hard and top girls Fasa Bartolo are going to try to bridge the gap with team Jaco Ulala as they were two of the teams that not represented in that potential breakaway but it's not going to happen as we're going to reel them back in as uh, the uh, AG insurance next gen the team U23 are uh, leading that little group but now brought back in looks like Arkea the pro cycling team is going at it again they are really decided to make things uh, move here Odile. this is about the fifth time that they've sent one of their riders to the front exactly uh, every time there is a move in the front you can see Arkea is there uh, responding or trying something. Um, one thing I've noticed is that when there is a little bit of a gap, uh, a breakaway attempt, every other teams are chasing. But one thing that could be made to is to force SD Works to chase and uh, to take control because you have to tired um, all the team in order to isolate Laura v Lorena Vibes at the end because all the other teams now are chasing and are working in front of the field but they could easily let SD Works do it and for example if there is a breakaway of three four riders in the front then uh, the pressure is on SD Works because we know that's the team that can work at the end, that can win at the end, I should say. So it's it's it could be a way uh, to burn them out before the finish. But for sure, everyone uh, wants to to try something and also be represented in the break. So that's why there is a lot of movement. But as we saw since it started, since we're on air, uh, nothing is nothing is able to stick. Because the pace is, is just increasing, disarraying, increasing, disarraying. So everybody has time to recover before the next attack. So nothing is uh, sticking right now. 
Yeah, and that yo-yo effect also becomes a very uh, wearing on uh, the riders. So we'll see who will survive. It is not a uh, very, very long race. It's only 100, well, only. It's 132 kilometers. However, I think what is uh, very, very taxing in, in this uh, event, Audrey, as you can see, these images don't lie. This is a windy, turny, uh, changing uh, of width of road. So that also will play on the nerves and bring in a lot of fatigue because you're continually having to focus on your piloting skills. And when it's attacking and doing the yo-yo, as we saw there, plus the way that the course is just winding and turning, you know, after a while, uh, the... Um, uh, riders that have less experience because don't forget there are some uh, less experienced riders if we just take a look at some of these teams Aji and Suraz next gen team it is a U23 team so uh, as you can understand most uh, women riding for that team will be 22 years and younger yes that's such a good point that you are bringing because uh, today and uh, what would be the most tiring it will be mentally because you are constantly uh, fighting for position and it's a never-ending battle for example if you are in the front or in the first tier of the field then you're there you're you're thinking you're safe but boom on the left on the right there is always other riders trying to move up and you're uh, you're kind of forced to go backwards a little bit in the field and you don't want to to do up another attack from uh, the uh, the uh, <coughs> jaco alula team great attack man pretty uh, pretty uh, strong attack with four riders uh, going up the road and what i was saying is it's mentally tiring to always fight for position it's like a washing machine effect you know it's always moving it's always moving and like you said there is corner right left right left and also lots of uh, objects on the road we saw it and there was a crash earlier so those are the thing that will be very tiring after a race yes you're tired you're tired you're physically tired but mentally it's draining a lot of energy out of you Yep, exactly. That is it. It's just that wear and tear that sets in after all that movement, all that concentrating, all that piloting. And yes, one can say, well, that's very easy at this level. No, it's not. And especially it is uh, still relatively early. Some of these uh, top teams or uh, the uh, more high level teams, yes, have been racing through some uh, racing uh, down under earlier in the season. As uh, right there, we're looking at... Uh, it looks like Loneke Unikin from Team ST Works. Yep, that is her. No panic there, just uh, trying to get back to the team uh, car for either some uh, feeding or a mechanical problem. Right there, making her way back, uh, or trying anyway, is uh, T. Tat Nguyen, who crashed earlier on on one of those winding uh, portions of the road. So yes, some of the uh, stronger teams have been the racing since what, uh, January, February. But uh, for some of the uh, smaller teams that don't get to travel so much and hit all the Women's World Tour stops, uh, these are some of their first races and uh, not on the easiest terrain. No, exactly. And uh, also a uh, great image here of uh, the DSM team. Uh, we know it, they have a good option today with uh, Charlotte Cool. Charlotte Cool is uh, used to be the uh, lead out woman for Lorena Vives. So that's an interesting um, season in between those two because Charlotte Cool has been beating uh, not only once but that twice uh, Lorena Vives on uh, a sprint stage at the UAE Tour. So stage one at the UAE Tour, she beat uh, Lorena Vives. Vives was second. And uh, also on uh, stage uh, uh, four, uh, Vives was third as Cool won. So that's pretty interesting. And that's why Team DSM are uh, in the front. They want to control and they know they has a pretty good chance they have a pretty good chance to win with charlotte cool because she has um, got stronger and also she's now the rider who has uh, who is uh, protected by her team um, not like uh, last year she was working and she was a big part of all those victory 
those victories that uh, Lorena Vives was able to get uh, last year. And uh, she is uh, such a great rider, 62 wins. Lorena Vives, and she's only 24 years old. So you can imagine that uh, this number will only go up by now. All right, there, the proof is in the pudding. A windy turn near roads, a 90 degree turn onto a, a two lane road here. Some more feeding at a very uh, tight spot out on the course with 63 kilometers to go. No real break has been able to uh, go away. We've had some attempts but uh, they have not gone anywhere we've uh, completed 65 just over 66 kilometers uh, if my calculations are right and uh, we have been racing for oh, about uh, an hour and 34 minutes now the average speed has gone up already we're talking of average speeds over about 40 kilometers an hour yeah it's increasing uh since we uh started the show now i uh, can see that uh, the sd works team is uh protecting very well lorena vives lorena vives in uh, white and blue with the uh, european champion um, jersey dsm on the right side in the middle it is sd works jaco alula are um, working well together as well it will be interesting um, what they could do in the uh, field sprint later on, if there is a field sprint. It looks like it's all together and they want to keep it that way. There is uh, all those teams has been um, building around, has been uh, building around a sprinter, as well as uh, the uh, UAE team with uh, Kiara Consoni who was uh, one of the uh, top sprinter last year here in this um, race. Oh, yeah. cool. So that's going to be interesting. When you have all teams with a big sprinter, uh, it's kind of the way it should be. They want to keep it all together. They don't want to let the break go up the road. Now, really controlling uh, this race uh, is Team SD Works. And uh, also there appearing is Team DSM. They don't have Vibes anymore in their uh, ranks, but they still want to do something here today. With Charlotte Cool, as you mentioned earlier on. Also uh, putting a few uh, numbers up to the front there is Team uh, Salatizit WNT, Francisca Braus, uh, and the Fidanza sisters, are part of that group and back uh, to the front now is uh, team jaco alula who uh, tried to send a few riders up the road earlier on 61 yep. k's to go right now there is no place whatsoever to move up the front the, it is curb to curb. The pace is quite fast. You can try to move up on the left or on the right, but there is no space. Uh, it's pretty dangerous. As you see on the uh, side of the road, there is a little bit of a gap and then boom, straight on the grass. So uh, you have to be careful on that. And uh, another object uh, in the middle of the road. Those, is, uh, those uh, objects are always difficult. Um, Especially, uh, you have to be focused all every every kilometer is on this road, um, and uh, 61k to go. It, there's gonna be the first uh, cobble uh, sector coming up, and uh, that's gonna be interesting for sure. Now that's the uh, battle of uh, positioning before that uh, cobble uh, sector, sector, I should say. And uh, one thing that is very important is uh, to be right up there because we're gonna see the field will be all stretched out in those uh, section, in this section coming up. And uh, they might have some split in the field, some gap. And if you're stuck in between someone and the rest of the field and you have to close a gap and another one it, it's gonna cost a lot of energy and then you might even have some 
attack um, in this uh, cobble uh, sector, try to make the difference and use those difficult sections to create something. Because right now, nothing has stuck. It's one big field. Yeah, I can just feel the impetus is growing, hence the reason why teams are forming at the front, bringing our leaders into safe quarters. Always a bit of a harrowing experience once you hit those uh, cobbled sections. And if there's one place uh, you want to be, it is right up at the front, leading your group in safe, uh, safely into those uh, sectors. As we are still in the Flanders area of Belgium. We'll be moving to the uh, Ardennes for the next, uh, or I should say, the continuation of our Spring Classics will day coming up. Exactly. And have a lot of good racing coming up. Uh, this uh, spring has been... Uh, didn't disappoint so far. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of action, both in the men's and women's race. That's uh, amazing to see that. And uh, I guess uh, in the uh, Paris-Roubaix, that will be a, a very uh, a crazy race again. And we saw in the past that there was a big solo breakaway with uh, Trek Segafredo woman uh, just letting everyone else behind with 40k to go. Uh, let's see if they will be able to do that again this year. Uh, that could be different because now they kind of used to, to be racing, uh, they are used to race Paris-Roubaix because that, this is fairly new. They started only in uh, 2021, uh, so uh, that's going to be only the uh, fourth edition, if I'm, if I'm not mistaking, something like that. So uh, at first it was all new and uh, nobody really knew what was to 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 ride on the cobble and especially the first edition was all wet that was just crazy crashing all over the place in the man's side and in the woman's side so this year they are expecting some uh, dry cobble so at least that will be dry and uh, there will be uh, some uh, great strategy going on yep so uh, we have completed uh, the dwells um, Tour of Flanders, the Charles d'Arpris is going today. We'll have Brabant et Pils next week, uh, which is also called La Flèche Brabanson. In between, we'll have uh, Paris Roubaix, and then we'll move to the Ardennes Classics, uh, Liège Bastogne Liège, La Doyenne, Flèche Wallon, and the Amstel Gold coming up. And Audrey and I will be joining you for a few of those, either in uh, English or French, one of the two uh, official languages of uh, Canada. But today in English with the Chelle de Prisse. Midweek uh, semi-classic, 58 kilometers to go. And uh, the uh, pack now on one of those cobbled sections, if I'm not mistaken, Audrey. We're just coming off one. Yeah, just coming off one. And there was already some uh, riders that weren't able to uh, stay with the field. Uh, that was a little bit tough for uh, some uh, cyclists. Yeah, but the road, once again, already moving back to a very wide format. And it's going to be time to try another few attacks. And here we go already. With, uh, some of the outfits deciding that it's time to move. Arkea Samsic, or Arkea Pro Team, uh, right up there, again. Yeah, great, yeah. great attack. Just after the cobble, when the road got wider, they used that opportunity to get away. And now they're rotating, so that's, that's a good news. They are uh, working together. Um, there is only like three, four second gap on the field. But look at that on the back of the field. It's really stretched out and some riders are just chasing back on. Well, let's see uh, who's uh, chasing on the field. Again, that's other teams. It looks like Sudal Quickstep that are chasing. And if I was them, I would just let all the SD Works team do the job, do the work because they are the strongest. We know they are dominating, and we know they have the back-to-back -back winner of uh, Helvetris. So 
why would you just do the work at their place at the, for them? You don't want to, the, to carry them on the line. And if the gap get bigger, um, that's more pressure on their shoulder because they are the team. They are the team to beat. Um, and let's see if they will just do that. For sure, if you're not represented in the break, yeah, you can send a rider up the road. But even here, there is uh, just two girls in the front, three on the back. It looks like some of them are not able to uh, carry the speed that the, the duo in the front. Yep, and uh, I was going to say, Audrey, that looks oddly like Simon Boilard, and it is Simon Boilard. So it's Simon Boilard, Catherine Declerc, Babette van der Wolf, Kelly van der Nabin. So uh, Simon Boilard is uh, right up there at the front where she was last year back in the break. The bronze medalist from the 2018 Junior World Championships in Innsbruck is uh, definitely on a mission here with her team. Yeah, like you mentioned, just like last year, she was part of the breakaway. And Simone Bolo has already a very great palmarès, 22 years old only. She was second on the, on a stage at the Tour of Cyclist Féminin International de l'Ardèche. Second at the Périgord Ladies. She was also almost winning the Young Riders jersey at the Tour de France Fam. I mean, Simone Boilard has so much talent, so she's so talented and today again she's showing it. That's the only break that was able to get some some time on the field and she's in it. She she waited the, the right moment, the perfect timing for her and her uh, breakaway uh, team, uh, teammate. Yeah, and not just that, just as it looked like they may be fading again, Simon was the one that pulled out and accelerated again and has really helped to create uh, this uh, gap here. And in uh, the group, we also have 156, which is Babette van der Waal from Life, Life Plus Waru. From Lotto Destiny, it's Steri Ferflot uh, that is there. From the Arkea Pro Cycling Team, it is Amandine Fouquenet. Uh, in that group uh, that they are telling us uh, at this point. We have Kelly Vandenstein, who uh, was the instigator, and uh, she, uh, once again, with number 136, riding for the Duolara Cheval Mera cycling team. Uh, and also uh, in that group, uh, we have Catherine de Klerk from Lotto Destiny women's team. Wow, this is really going through every uh, type of... Uh, roads here now back into an industrial sector back into a uh, residential sector after hitting uh, the fields and so forth but uh, the group at the front is starting to gain a little bit of time Audrey absolutely that looks great for them and look at Simon how strong she is such a great technique she has been working on her uh, position on the bike uh, since she uh, had her uh, surgery um, and uh, it has been uh, working really well for her since she is a little bit more compact on the bike she's transferring the watt even stronger and faster and 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 more powerful uh on the bike as compared as before she was she had a more aggressive uh, position she, her um her back her upper body was way um lower but unfortunately she had a problem with that especially with her uh, leg so she decided with her uh, coach Pierre Utebo to work on that position and it has been working really well and she's so powerful even on the flat she can climb as well we saw it earlier this year in Australia she was almost with the best climber in the world she was just there and uh, she can sprint she is a fast finisher she's very good to position herself when it's a big Bunch sprint. So she, she has everything, Simon, to be one of the top of the world. Well, it's great to see uh, young Canadians involved in the racing. We saw Simon's uh, 
boyfriend, Nicholas Zukowski, do really well at some of these uh, Flanders Classics in the break on two of the races in the last uh, 10 days or so. Well, while these ladies are starting to uh, garner some distance uh, on the main field, we are going to take a short break. Once again, you are watching uh, the women's Shell de Pris on Flow Bikes. Well, we are back uh, with the women's uh, Chelle de Pris uh, and uh, 50 Ks to go. Once again, we have now what looks like uh, the right breakaway or the one that will at least uh, take us uh, to the front for a little while with Amandine Fouquenet from Arkea. We have uh, Kelly Van Destin, uh, which is also there from the Douala Chevalier cycling team. We have Babette Van der Wolf uh, from the Life Plus Wahoo. Catherine de Klerk from Lotto Destiny and from the same Michel Mavic Aubert 93 women's team, Simone Boilard, the young Canadian from Quebec City. And Audrey, uh, I'm sure that uh, Pierre and uh, company are uh, very happy to see their daughter back riding at this level. And as we were saying just before the uh, 
commercial break. Uh, Nicholas Zukowski riding with the new team at Q36 uh, has been very active. Uh, they are looking very good. We saw also his teammate uh, Filippo Colombo, uh, the mountain biker, uh, doing uh, very well in the Tour de Flanders as he was in the break and tried to hold on for the longest of time with some of the best. Absolutely, that was such a great day for him. Um, I think at this level, I think it could be was one of his best results and his best uh, accomplishment. Honestly, he was so strong, and it's just where he, he is is. Um, meant to be because since uh, a couple of years uh, Nick Zukowski has been one of the best uh, talented rider uh, here up in Canada so there is no doubt about it that's just starting for him so I'm gonna see him more and more and uh, for Akea good for them they, they have been putting uh, someone on the break in the break I should say Amandine Fouquenet is there we saw them they were always uh, really uh, aggressive since the beginning of the um, the race so Amandine Fouquenet only 22 years old she was uh, six last year at La Classic Morbihan so uh, ninth at uh, a stage in the uh, Tour of Lardèche in 2021 so that's a great uh, uh, rider to put up the road yeah and the youngest of the group is Babette van der Wolf only 18 years old Riding for the Life Plus uh, Wahoo. Uh, her teammate, uh, Karine Soderquist, uh, what a race she had uh, last week. Uh, she held on to the front group at the uh, Dwarves Door Flanderen. So we are looking at uh, still to go here 48 kilometers. This is looking like a very, very interesting break. They are now up to 39 seconds. And uh, it is a flat uh, course today, as Audrey mentioned. It is very twisty, very windy, however. But now it's kind of like a, a faux plat, a false flat all the way back into Schotten today. Yeah, that's going to be interesting and that's going to be very tiring as well. And uh, the fatigue will increase in the legs as we uh, as they will do uh, three laps of a course of uh, 17k. So we're gonna have to do it uh, three times. Great collaboration in this group. Look at that good rotation. Uh, they are rotating uh, through every time. And uh, now we have some image of the field. This is the back of the Palton, but uh, I'm wondering who is chasing in the front or even if they are letting this break go because 39 seconds, that's a decent gap. And uh, I don't see the uh, field being strong out right now. So uh, it looks like they're just controlling. Everything is good. Everything is under control right now. 40 seconds is still something that um, is easy to bring back. And last year, when uh, Rowena Vibes won the DSM rider, last year she was part of the DSM team, they would not let more than one minute gap to the breakaway. So it looks like they want to do something like that today as well. So 40 seconds, I think they will just hold that, that gap in between 40 to one minute. So now SD Works will be on a mission because they have the possibility, the opportunity to win it, to win it today uh, with Lorena Vibes. Uh, and that will be her third win of this um, back to back to back of uh, Hildebris. And don't forget that we are, uh, Audrey, on for the rest of this race, that circuit that uh, they will complete uh, three times. So that also can play in because uh, they are going to be uh, trying to keep at bay uh, SD Works and uh, some of the other stronger teams. So there might be a lot of action before this one is over as we are now uh, past the uh, 84K mark completed. Yes, exactly. That could have a lot of action. It looks like we are just happy with the, <clears throat> with the breakaway right now. No team is chasing full gas. Great job for uh, those riders up front. Rotating through good collaboration. That was the most important. That with Babette uh, van der Wolf uh, 
holding strong at the front. Uh, and uh, they are doing a very good job of uh, holding on to the lead with Amandine Fouquenet from uh, the Achia Pro Cycling Team. And at the back, well, it's just holding on. As they know, 46 kilometers is the mission right now. And just dangling uh, off the back, and she has been for the longest time, uh, is uh, Emily Meekin from uh, AWOL's O'Shea, a British uh, team. And you mentioned earlier, Randy, that uh, Babette uh, Van Der Wolf is only 18 years old. She's there. She just took her pool. I'm pretty amazed of this girl. I mean, 18 years old, you're on a breakaway on a spring classic, and you're taking your pool, you're working, you're working the same amount of all the other riders in the break. I mean, chapeau, she's strong. Only 18 years old, she's from Netherlands, and uh, she will be uh, racing for Life Plus uh, Wahoo till uh, 2024. She signed her contract in, uh, next year. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, she's already having a lot of uh, top 25, top 20 uh, results, uh, especially this uh, year at the Tour de Normandie Féminin. She got 17 on the stage. And uh, she's also a great teammate. She's working as well for her uh, teammate uh, most of the time. So we see her there on the on the right just took her pull and she, she she has a good technique she has great power uh also good physical i'm pretty sure she can climb very well with her uh um her uh, light weight she's uh very impressive honestly i think we're gonna see her more and more as the year will come yeah and uh, based on the statistics this is her real first classic that yes, uh, she exactly. has uh, taken part in. Um, it, yeah, respectable. Uh, when she was only 16 years old, she did end up ninth in the GC of uh, the uh, very prestigious Watersley Ladies Challenge when she was only 16 years old. So fantastic uh, start to her career. Seen some good uh, flashes, some good sparks of talent from this Life Plus Yahoo. Uh, Wahoo, pardon me, team. As I said, uh, Karine Soderquist uh, was very active at the front of the uh, Dwarves uh, race one week ago. So we'll see. The question is, uh, is uh, any of uh, the uh, top teams, maybe SD Works, uh, Phoenix de Conanque, Israel Premier Tech, Live, TSM and company to make a move here in the uh, final 44 kilometers? It is to be seen at this point. Yes, and since the breakaway is gone, we haven't seen the front of the field. Uh, the image will show us just the, the back of the field. So we don't know who's chasing, what's the situation, or if they are looking at each other, if they are just controlling. I'm, I'm pretty sure now it's good the, everything is under control but still we haven't seen the image and that will be great to see what's happening in the front of the field well we just had a slight glimpse there Audrey, as the uh, camera was panning down the street um no sight on our peloton yet as uh, they have grown their lead to 41 seconds with uh, 40k to go and once again uh, we have a group of five riders that uh, got in uh, to uh, uh, this uh, situation but just a few kilometers ago it hasn't been uh, very long that they've been out there barely what eight kilometers since they uh, took off uh, and uh, coming out of a uh, cobble section and a very windy twisty section they got uh, out once again the cobble sections on this race Audrey, nothing like uh, we've had in the other uh, Flanders classics over the last few weeks no, exactly. It's just uh, a few cobble sector, and even the first cobble sector we saw was 1.7k, but it was not a rough one. You know, it can almost it was almost hard to to um, to see if it was cobble or asphalt. So it's not like in Flanders or even what we're gonna see in Paris Roubaix, where it's big, big, difficult cobble, and there is like angle in between the middle and on every side of the cobble sector just to ride on it is itself a big accomplishment 
as compared as the first one we saw was just a straight one uh flat not not angly and uh, that was a well, we can call it an easy one for sure uh, not everybody can do this uh, they are professional rider and they have uh, been uh, training for that but still it's a little bit different like i mentioned for sure another one. So that's the, the same. That's exactly what we were seeing. Yeah, this is exactly. the couple sector, but it's not as rough as the one we used to see, even in Dwarzdorf, Vlanderen, Dwarzdorf, Vlanderen, sorry, and um, Tour of Flander. Look at that. Yeah, it's, not it's, the it's not the Petterberg or the Quartermund uh, to name but a few. It is uh, pretty flat. No real gutters to speak of. No high rise in the center. So very tight pave, as you can see there. And they'll be completing that. They are also on uh, the uh, road circuit. Or I should say the finishing circuit is a three-lap around that finishing circuit to wrap things up. So well, they, they've been showing for the last few minutes uh, a group number two. So it looks like we may have some riders that are... Uh, midway between our group of five and the peloton they have still not identified those riders on our live feed so we'll be keeping an eye open for that so they're throwing some names out it looks like it might be sarah van de Vel and noel rucci noel rucci another mountain biker we've seen her on the uh, mountain bike world cup as a u23 uh, rider over the last uh, few seasons she's won uh, also some uh, I should say a, a junior rider. She has won some uh, races in that category. So like uh, Filippo Colombo and many others taking a bit of a uh, trip here early in the season to get the, the uh, legs warmed up for mountain bike uh, season. We've also had Yolanda Neff taking part in some road racing in the last few years. But uh, today it is the young Noel Ricci riding uh, once again for the AG Insurance Next Generation U23 team. Yeah, great to see her uh, in uh, the chasing group. It looks like um, <clears throat> on our screen, uh, there is only one group now up the road. Field is now at 40 seconds. So as we can see, it's they are very control. They are controlling the uh, gap in between the breakaway and the field. There they are. The cobble sector is uh, over and then they will start to rotate through again. A little bit more uh, stretched out in the field. As we can see, there is a. Um, they are uh, on. They are approximately like 200 meters long. Uh, on the um, between in the first uh, rider uh, in the front of the field and the last one, it looks like you can just soft pedal when you are on the back of the field. But it's always dangerous if there is a crash, if there is anything, they are still riding pretty fast. So it's, a, it's tough to react quickly and you don't control as much as you would like when you're on the back like that. Well, one thing for sure, Audrey, uh, they are showing from time to time a group two appear on our uh, race situation. That means that uh, things are livening up a bit at the back. That means that some of the teams are trying to bridge across some of the teams that have missed uh, this break. Yeah, it's important to be represented in the break, uh, especially since the, the collaboration is pretty good. Look at that. The gap has, has gone down a little bit after uh, that uh, cobble uh, sector. So it's a sign that it was a bit faster uh, on the f in the field behind the breakaway and like you mentioned for sure if you're not represented in the breakaway you, you need to have a rider up there especially if you don't have a pure sprinter in your squad that makes it double more important because if the breakaway goes all the way to the, to the end and you're not there for sure to have no chance to win whatsoever and if you don't have a pure sprinter forget it to win it on the on the uh, field sprint against uh, Lorena Vibes. So uh, that's, uh, that might be what uh, Sarah Van de Vel and Noelle uh, Ritchie was trying to do earlier. But uh, honestly, I don't give so much uh, of my money on the breakaway. 
I wouldn't uh, bet my house uh, on that because uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the field now is just controlling as we see they, they couldn't gain time uh, in the last uh, 20k, the, the breakaway of five riders. So it means that they are controlling as the works if the as soon as they want to bring it back, they will do it and they won't take time. It's just a matter of when they will do it. They will wait the perfect moment to do it. One thing it looks like, Oli, uh, we got another call here for a group two. So it looks like Van de Velle and Reutschi might still be in between. But one thing that we've seen is we don't have a camera motorbike in between the breakaway and the uh, peloton. So we have no idea of what teams right now are doing all the work at the front. We can expect, we can probably say for sure that SD Works and company are there. And here we are. There are Van de Velle and Reutschi. So they are still uh, in no man's land or no woman's land here at 23 seconds behind the league group. So they're just about 20 seconds uh, up on the peloton. So Hoichi right there with uh, number 74, the young uh, mountain biker. And also with her, Vanarella, right there with uh, her uh, impetus is uh, to make it uh, to uh, the front. Uh, and uh, they want to be represented, Audrey. So they're they're closing in. They are gaining time with the, the group right there in their eyesight. Yeah, when they have the rest of the uh, when they have the breakaway on their side, now it's it looks good. It looks great for them. But it's not uh, it's not done yet. Uh, they have been working well together, uh, Van de Velle and uh, Hoi Chi. So that's the great news. But uh, also, it's going to be uh, very important. Now, the breakaway will have seven riders and everybody will work together. That will uh, put things in perspective for uh, the rest of the field because seven riders working together is a little bit tough to uh, catch than only five riders. So they are almost there a few meters before they... Uh, do the junction with uh, the uh, original uh, breakaway and uh, uh, Van de Velle, uh, Roichi, they have uh, done a great move there because they weren't represented in the breakaway and now they are about to do the junction. Well, hopefully this will not be all for naught because um, as we mentioned a few moments ago, you can expect the uh, teams like SD Works and company to start moving, especially now that Phoenix Dukenek, uh, one of the uh, preferred teams, may have a rider very soon in that league group in Sarah Van de Velle. Yes, Sarah Van de Velle, uh, she's also a great, uh, great rider for uh, the um, Phoenix Dukenink Continental. She was also uh, second in the uh, individual uh, championship back in 2020 at the uh, national uh, championship. She was just behind uh, uh, Lotta Kopicki. So um, that's uh, pretty impressive. She can trial and that's why now number 75. And that's why she's took, she's taking long pull and look at that every time she's in the front she can gain some time on the rest of uh, the breakaway on the breakaway i should say so um sarah van der Velle, she has a great historic she's uh, from belgium so there is a lot of riders from belgium in the breakaway we have kelly van den steen we have catherine de Klerk, and we're gonna have sarah van der Velle. so three a belgium rider out of seven riders in front of the race. That looks good for them. Yep, Van de Velle also winning the bench. She made bench back in 2021. So she has winning ways in her talent skill set. And right there, she is driving the duo of Ricci and herself into contention here with 36 kilometers to go and 36 seconds is the gap between our group of leaders, which will be seven strong very soon. And there they are. The junction has been made. Van de Velle, Rucci joining Fouquenet, Van de Steen, Van der Wolf, De Klerk, and Boilard. 
This is getting interesting now. This is going to make it harder for uh, some of the the big teams to get back into the mix. Yes, 36 seconds is not a great uh, gap. It's not a huge gap. But on this type of course, Audrey, which is such a, a winding, curvy, turny course, um, it makes it harder for a, a group to chase because it's not big, long straights where you can gain time. You have a visual on uh, your uh, breakaway. This is going to be a bit more complex, I think, and uh, somebody's going to have to start uh, putting uh, uh, the uh, fire to uh, the, uh, or I should say, put the match to the fire to get things going here. Yeah, and, and last year, if we are comparing the uh, last year's edition with this year, they made it to the local circuit. Um, the breakaway made it to the local circuit, but the gap was reduced to 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And when they started the uh, local circuit, Team DSN was, uh, were already in the front of the pack, um, chasing the, the, the breakaway down. So uh, after that, when the breakaway um, had the, uh, the info that there were four on chasing behind, there was a big attack from Abby Schmidt and, uh, with 8K to go. But Team DSN was able to bring everything back in the last 5k of the race so that could look like that as well so this is the red flame the last k so look at the long straight finishing um section uh it's perfect for a pure sprinter so as we can see that's gonna be the uh, finish later on and we're gonna have a tough battle if it's a bump sprint perfect for the pure sprinter especially for rowing up the bits yeah, it's probably the only section over there of this whole race that is long and a bit wide on this uh, finishing circuit. For the rest, it's windy, turny, and very narrow at some points, going along the river and uh, also into uh, the industrial section. Peloton not panicking at this point as they have uh, the full width of the road. And there is our group of seven leaders. Whoa, that gets really narrow going through that tunnel there. That'll be uh, one thing to be careful of uh, once the peloton goes by. Latest uh, gap, once again, 36 seconds on the Shell de Prise 2023 women's race. Yeah, and the uh, finish is uh, 1.4k straight line on the flat section. Um, and it's pretty wide, like you said, 6 meters wide. So this is the finish line. And uh, that's, like mentioned, almost the uh, only long straight section like that. But if we take a look of the uh, last 5K, there will be a, a sharp right turn at uh, 3.5K to go, which uh, will be really important that your uh, lead out is uh, well prepared for that. Also, just before the 2K mark, there will be another sharp right turn that will lead us to that long straight section all the way till the end. So only two sharp right turn that will be um, a bit harder for uh, the field sprint. And last year, don't forget, there was a big, big crash 1K before the finish. So it's uh, always uh, it's, it's always something we don't want to see so we we are hoping that this year it's not going to be the case but that was um that crash cost a good uh, place finish to some of the pure sprinter that were involved in that crash so let's see what's gonna unfold a little bit later but right now the gap has gone a little bit bigger 48 seconds yep. it looks good for the breakaway Yep, it's gone up to 48 seconds, and as you said, it'll be looking really good for the breakaway in these final few kilometers. And, oh, there was a crash, Ori. Yep, right yeah. there. And it uh, looks like one of the uh, UAE team members, if I'm not mistaken. And the rider is struggling. Uh, tangled. Uh, the foot is caught in uh, the uh, pedal, so that... Uh, Definitely not what you want to have happen. And especially when you're flat out with vehicles going by and everything. But anyway, we are getting back to racing with seven riders at the front of the race with 32 kilometers to go. We have Sarah Van de Velle, 
from the uh, Phoenix uh, de Canac. We have Noel Ritchie with the uh, Asian 2R team uh, is right there. Amandine Fouquet Arkea, Kelly Van de Steen uh, wearing number 136 with the Dualar Chevelmeyer. Van der Wolf with the Life Plus Wahoo, De Klerk with Lodo Destiny, Simone Boilard, the Canadian riding with Saint Michel Mavic over 93. They now have 49 seconds up on the group, and they are still working very well together, Audrey. Nobody has given up here on this. Oddly enough, the, it's only the third edition of the women's race, but this is the oldest race of the Flanders Classics. It's even older uh, than the uh, Tour of Flanders. First edition of this race was held in 1907 for the men. Yeah, that's an old race. That's a race that has been on the calendar forever. And uh, like you mentioned, only the third uh, edition for the woman. And the first two edition was won by uh, Lorena Vibes. Uh, why not win another one uh, today? The the field was a little bit uh, more strung out. It looks like they it looks like they were uh, chasing a little bit uh, the uh, breakaway since they are seven. Though uh, the breakaway uh, has been uh, gaining a uh, ten second almost on the rest uh, of the field, on the field uh, behind. So, like you mentioned earlier, great collaboration. Look at that. Everybody is rotating through. And that's so important to work together as long as possible. You don't you don't want the chemistry to, uh, to stop at some point because it's going to be chaotic. And uh, what it's is going to happen is get, get, that there's going to be some attacks in between the uh, inside the breakaway and there's nothing you can do alone or only two riders between a full field uh so you need to work together that's great amanzin fouquet looks like she's hurting a little bit the rider from arkea since uh a, a few uh, kilometers we're seeing her face in her face that it's a bit harder than some other riders as compared to uh Simone Boilard, who is just stoic, she, she, she's not moving, the upper body is so straight, she looks like she has so much power on her legs. So Fouquet, hopefully she will uh, just uh, be able to stay with the uh, breakaway uh, for a long time and continue to collaborate. So that's a great day for those riders. And they are pretty young, uh, almost all of them in the breakaway, all the seven riders are about uh, in between 20 years old to um, 25. So, and like you mentioned, like mentioned earlier, Babette van der Wolf is only 18 years old. Simon is 22 years old, very young. Simon Boilard, 21 years old for uh, Catherine de Klerk. And um, it's all young rider. Kelly Van Der Steen might be the oldest, 27 years old. 22 years old for Amandine Fouquenet. 18 for Noelle Rucci, uh, Roichi, I should say. So two riders only 18 years old in this breakaway. That's pretty impressive. 28 years old for Sarah Van Der Hel. Impressive, good job for the breakaway still uh, together right now. And uh, I'm gonna head to the cobble sector pretty soon, another time. Like we mentioned, it's uh, three a lot of the uh, local circuit. The local circuit is 17k. The first edition was a little bit more uh, chaotic as there was a lot of crash. There was also a group of 16 rider, 16 riders that got away from the peloton early in the race. 
so uh, that was quite uh, different but after when there was um, the chasing back in the field there was another crash unfortunately but uh, at the end it was the same scenario the uh, DSM team was able to uh, chase back on and to bring Lorena Vibes to the victory one minute the gap pretty good one minute it's uh, been uh, increasing that's uh, great news for the breakaway mm. with 28k to go yep that is uh, definitely good news so it means that Audrey, they are working uh, very well together as you mentioned and uh, one two three four five six and still seven no change to that We are looking at once again at our uh, riders at the front of this uh, women's Chiel de Pris event. Schotten to Schotten. Just uh, about 132 kilometers, just under that uh, for a total today. 28 uh, kilometers to go exactly. 104. Well, this is a uh, kind of odd, Audrey. Doesn't look like uh, there's any any impetus, any movement at the back to bring these women back. Well said, Randy. We saw the field uh, earlier, and uh, it was curb to curb. Yes. Oh, uh, Simone Bolan asking for gel. I think. Yeah, she wants to have some food. Great uh, move from her. You need to stay. Uh, you need to feed yourself up all the way till the end. Especially when you're in the break, you want to put all the chains on your side. Chains are your, you have to put all the chains on your side. And we saw the image of the, the field. And yes, it was curb to curb, but was not all out. And uh, no, no, no uh, the field was not stretched out, was not a single file, just waiting. They're still waiting. And I think it's the scenario that I was expecting is nobody wants to chase. Uh, they want to let SD Works do the work, and I think that's the best uh, possible scenario. It's not that I'm against SD Works, but it's mostly <laughs> like if you want to find a way to to win, you have to let the pressure uh, on their shoulder. The, the they are so strong; they can do everything. Uh, what they, they can do, uh, they can chase. Uh, easily uh, one minute 12 uh, it's pretty big it's uh, it's getting big as a gap so it's good now they are still working together two athletes uh, has uh, only 18 years old on uh, this uh, on this breakaway um, still uh, impressive Babette uh, van der Wolf uh, and uh, also uh, Noeli Roichi Two young guns, really impressive here today in those two ladies, and one of them being this lady here doing the work at the front, as Audrey mentioned. Van der Wolf, very, very strong. And 114. Hmm, this is very interesting. With 26 kilometers to go, we have a minute and 14 seconds these women right now the the sign that they are eating and that they are feeding right now is a definite sign that they are going in a, they're going to go all in they're going to try to take this right to the end they're fueling up for maybe a sprint maybe a very very fast finale oh yes that's for sure it's um, a great opportunity now 46 uh, k an hour 1 minute 14 still you can see that the field is taking the, the full road, so it's not all out right now. Otherwise, that will be one single line and the field will be more stretched out. So it means that the chase is not started yet, has not started yet. So um, it's going to be interesting as um, 
to see when uh, SD Works will want to uh, start to chase. Remember that they have uh, great riders on this uh, race. Uh, I believe that the last rider in front of uh, Lorena Vivas will be Barbara Gwarski, who was um, in the uh, top five last year. She finished fifth, so she know uh, she knows that finish. She is very strong. Uh, she won some races uh, herself as well. So that should be the last rider uh, for Lorna Vives if it's a field sprint. But before that, they will uh, uh, for sure put some rider in the front. Um, and don't forget about Marlon Royce who can uh, push the big gear and uh, bring uh, the watts for a long period of time so she can easily go in the front and just press the pedal and close the gap uh, in a, just a short amount of time. Well, See, it's not, not uh, allowed right now. No, yeah. no. They're not able, I guess there's no room for the motorbikes on this type of course to hang out at the front of the peloton, so they're always showing us the rear however the time gap is pretty much stable at 113 here and uh, audrey i was peering over while you were making uh, your comments and analysis there um trying to see who of the sd works women uh and uh, some of the other top teams uh, are announced for this weekend's paris roubaix and uh, apart from lotte kobeki nobody is up on that what they call the long list or the early start list uh, right now. So uh, basically, because I was wondering, would any of these uh, Team SD Works women be just uh, kind of uh, ramping things up for the weekend? It would not be it, their style. They usually, when they show up at a race, it, they are there to win. But I was saying, well, maybe uh, we're thinking of something else. Maybe is this a prep a race? But uh, once again, a team of that uh, strength doesn't just show up to train yeah exactly they, they show up to win uh, like we saw in uh, every race they started so uh, that's going to be interesting and especially uh, this weekend for uh, Paris Roubaix and uh, right now I'm pretty impressed of the uh, seven uh, riders up front they are doing a great job I'm uh, amazed uh, with what they are doing and uh, yeah. the field now still uh, all together and uh, if you are um, a writer, uh, like for example, uh, Maggie Coles Lister, who is uh, a great uh, sprinter, it, it's uh, a good opportunity for her today. Um, remember, she, uh, wearing, she's wearing the uh, national uh, champion jersey. She uh, won uh, the road race last year in uh, Edmonton, back in Canada, 24 years old. Uh, and uh, this year she, she was very close to the victory or a podium, I should say, many times. So Santos tour uh, down under on the field sprint. Uh, in the first stage, she was fourth behind uh, Pikulik, Coponi and Baker. So uh, she was uh, very close to the podium. She got uh, second on the uh, Vuelta Extremadura Femina. She was uh, a second uh, spot uh, finisher, second place finisher behind Maeva Squiban. So she got a couple calls called uh, Maggie Cole's Lister and she knows how to fight on uh, a field like that. And also now she knows that uh, she needs to be on the uh, SD Works train. For sure, she's going to have a few teammates that will uh, help her. Um, but uh, she can uh, she can do well uh, today. Uh, let's see how she's going to um, she's going to do it at the end. But first, they're going to have to catch this breakaway. One minute, 21. Uh, it's still increasing. Uh, they are yeah. still increasing their lead, uh, Randy. Yeah, that gap is not coming down. And uh, this is looking mighty fine for these uh, women with 22 kilometers to go. Once again, they have been on this uh, local circuit around Schotten for the last uh, while. They hit the circuit with about 80 kilometers completed on the 132 of the day. 
140 uh, riders started this uh, Chanel de Prise event today. With the, uh, I'm sure for a lot of riders, a very different scenario uh, was uh, in view for today's race. But no, a group of five, then a group of seven. And a breakaway that took the longest time, Audrey, to materialize and to really gain any considerable time. Yeah, it wasn't about uh, only uh, 6K to go that the breakaway was able to go. And uh, Simon Boileau, the uh, Canadian rider from Saint-Michel-Aubert, was uh, one of the uh, instigator. Um, the, uh, they saw it well, the attack at the right moment, just after the cobble section. The road got a bit wider and then they got away. So it's uh, a great scenario for them. And when you're in a breakaway like that, you always have to believe that you have a chance. Uh, there's no way you are in a breakaway collaborating and saying to yourself, oh, we will get, we, they will bring us down, uh, they will bring us back anyway. You have to be in a positive mind and always has a little part of yourself that will believe uh, that it can go all the way to the line. And now as the, uh, uh, the race unfolds, uh, it's uh, a, big, a bigger gap that they had Last year, uh, last year, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, team DSN um, led only 60 seconds to the breakaway and they were chasing full gas. Uh, now, there is already uh, more than 60 seconds and the field is not even chasing right now. And But the problem is that we don't have the camera on the uh, front of the field. Unfortunately, maybe the later we're gonna have uh, the image, so it's either the breakaway or uh, the back of the field. So we don't know now if the chase is has started, but what we know is that the gap is still increasing, and that looks good for the breakaway with 20 k to go. Well, I don't want to preach for my own parish uh, here, Audrey, but this is also looking good for Simone Boila, because don't forget, Simone is an excellent climber, but she is also a pretty good sprinter, and this could be uh, a day for her to shine. Oh, absolutely. That's uh, I'm happy you are bringing uh, this up, because uh, Simone is a great uh, finisher. She is... Uh, she knows how to uh, play to uh, position herself before a sprint, either when she's in a small group like that or in a bunch sprint. And don't forget that last year at the Tour de France Femme, she had the top 10 uh, in the big bunch sprint uh, early in the uh, in the first stage of the Tour de France Femme. She was eight. So that was probably one of the fastest sprint finish. We know that's the, the that was on the Champs-Élysées. So Lorena Vibes won. Mayan Voss was second, Lotto Kopecky was third, and I can keep going like that. Mm. And uh, because it's all big sprinter, the top sprinter on in the world, and Simone Boileau got eight just behind Elisa Balsamo, who got seven. So it means that she is a really fast finisher, and uh, for sure, in this breakaway, she could be one of the top finisher, and that could be one of her... Uh, biggest uh, victory uh, of uh, her career 19k to go she needs to stay calm and ride really intelligently to be able to have the fresher legs at the end and everything is possible for her yeah and simon uh, is kind of hanging at the back they're not taking as many poles at this point so maybe she is trying to conserve some energy here with under 20k to go we're at 19 Early on this season, uh, in January, she was part of a huge group of a 17 that sprinted for the win at the uh, Cadelevin's Great o uh, Ocean Road Race. She ended up in 10th. So uh, we shall see here. This is uh, looking very interesting for the young woman from Quebec City. And she moves back to the front, so she'll be doing some of her duties. This group is still working very well, despite the fact that we are in the final 20 kilometers Yeah, that's impressive, and uh, they need to keep that collaboration mm. as long as possible. Uh, if there is uh, some attacks, 
because there might be there is some riders in this uh, breakaway that uh, uh, don't have a fast finish so they might try something a little bit later on and that could just kill the collaboration and the chemistry in this uh, leading group but the most uh, most importantly they need to stay together as far as possible and then they can start to play games if they still have a great gap like that 124 with 1k to go that would be perfect to just look at each other but now there is uh, one other lap the last local lap of the circus so uh, they still need to work together and i'm pretty excited to see what's gonna happen in the uh, in the field well, you can already, already kind of feel that some of these uh, women are trying, trying to push it a little bit. And you can read right here on the, the face of the rider from uh, Arkea Pro Cycling Team, Amandine Fouquenet, that it is not an easy task at this point. She's actually going to uh, try to keep on feeding. They've been in the lead for over 35 kilometers now. Five of the seven women, uh, the others joined uh about uh, halfway or half of the distance of that so this will be uh, the last trip through the line only before they battle it out here for the finale at the uh, 2023 women's event and there they are and uh that's gonna be um a great place for us to see what uh, the field looks like we hear the bell like you mentioned last lap of this course they still have a great gap one minute 23 seconds uh, on the field and i'm pretty sure with this uh, camera view we're gonna have uh, um, the field uh, we're gonna see if the field is still oh. waiting or if, if they are chasing so that's gonna be interesting yeah, because uh, it's time to move now. There's only one yeah. lap of the circuit left. And uh, the uh, group at the front is showing a lot of cohesion right now. The uh, clock is going, and right there, it looks like uh, some of the teams are starting to make a move. Team UAE starting positioning their riders at the front. Seratazit is there. DSM also. A few of Simon Boilard's teammates also there, but they are definitely not going to be doing any work to reel in the Canadian. And the gap time. Let's see what it gives as we should have that timing point very soon. Pro Cycling Stats is telling us at this time, Audrey, it is still about 1.23. As you can see, the clock running in the bottom there. Yeah, and the uh, the field is not uh, chasing full gas. Now it oh. says that uh, there is only 45 seconds. Hmm. Which, who's telling the truth? Yeah, it, even Pro Cycling Stats now has moved to 45 seconds. So that 45 seconds seems to be the official time. The Peloton has started to move, Audrey. 16 kilometers. 45 seconds for these uh, seven women. Once again, Saren, Sarah Van der Velde, Noël Rucci, Amandine Fouquenet, Kelly Van der Steen, Babette Van der Wolf, Catherine de Klerk, and Simone Boilard are right up at the front. The uh, rider with the most days of riding in her legs this season is Simone with 13. Van der Wolf has uh, raced eight times. De Klerk six. Van der Velde and Rucci uh, are at five. Van der Steen and Fouquenet at four. So as I said uh, earlier on in our broadcast, some of the top teams have raced since January. For some of these uh, smaller teams and development teams, uh, there hasn't been as much racing in the lanes. And oh, it's speeding no. up now. They've heard that the time gap is coming down. Oh, absolutely. They, they really need to... Uh bring their a game right now they need to uh, just add one more gear and continue to work well together and to put the pressure on the field and also like we saw last year at 8k to go there was a big attack from abby schmidt once the gap is a little bit too small and that mm, it's almost impossible to go all the way to the line then 
for sure there will be some attempt and uh, why not try and unfortunately the team are still complete on the on the field we saw UAE a full squad was there SD works as well DSM and those are the big sprinter to watch Chiara Consoni Charlotte Cool, Lorena Vibes uh, also in Saratizid there is some uh, pretty great sprinter they were still there all together working and uh, Martina Fidanza the rider she's only 23 years old and she's a world champion on the track back to back world champion on the scratch so we know she's fast and now she has a full squad with her as well back in the field and look at the field right now now it's stretched out now it's it's chasing yep. uh, full gas yeah we can see a big difference before uh, between now and earlier yeah uh, definitely that uh the move has started on these wider roads, at, or this portion of that uh, city circuit around Schotten, which is a bit wider. They do go back into the older parts where it does narrow down and get a bit more hectic. 39 seconds, however, with 14k to go. Is this still possible for the seven breakaway artists, Ori, to stay away and win this one? Well, like I mentioned earlier, I wouldn't... Uh bet my house on the breakaway because uh, <laughs> there is full squad chasing uh, if they are looking at each other in the field and they, nobody wants to work like I haven't seen SD works in the front of the field uh, we saw UE and DSM so far so but I would be surprised that they let this one go uh, because when you have a sprinter, you register for that race to win. You know that this race has been finishing on a sprint, uh, on a field sprint, the, th the, the two first edition that it was on. So we know that the scenario usually is made for that. So and what I think is that they will just time it to perfection. Um, like they did last year, they, they brought back the uh, breakaway uh, in the last five kick. But this being said, that being said, I believe that the seven rider breakaway, they have been showing great strength. I'm happy to see that they are still collaborating. They are just, they brought the pace a little bit higher when they heard that the gap um, was going down. So it means that they are still committed, and this, I like to see that. Yeah, and we've seen over the last few kilometers, definitely Van de Velle and Fouquenet are the strongest. They have been driving a few times, have ramped uh, the uh, pace up so hard that others have really tried to, uh, or have to, uh, bridge that gap, close it up, bring it back into a tight formation. So let's watch for them. 31 seconds with 13 kilometers to go here in this uh, 2023 edition of the Shell de Pris uh, women's event. And uh, the pack taking the full width of the road. That's the unfortunate thing that we can't get to see what's happening at the front of this pack, Audrey, because we have no idea yeah. who's taking the impetus of doing all the work to reel these uh, women in. As we, you said, the only... Uh, front frontal shots of uh, this group that we've seen have been when they come around the line. There we go, finally. Well, it is UAE doing all the work, Audrey, it looks like. Yeah, I'm happy that uh, we have the image right now. Yeah, UAE a full back in full action in the front. Second team on the wheel is SD Works. So SD Works has been uh, using the UAE squad to uh, protect themselves and uh, um, it looks good for the UAE squad. Remember last year, Kiara Consoni got the second behind Rowena Vibes. Completely on the left side is uh, the DSM squad with Charlotte Kuhn. Charlotte Kuhn. Cool, sorry. Uh, so she's one of the top uh, sprinter in the field as well. 21 second. That looks like it's going to be a tough one mm. for the breakaway because the chase is full on now. Yeah, they are going full gas, and good for UAE, bringing uh, 
second place finisher from the Dwarves Tour Flanderin last week. She had won in 2022, Chiara Consoni. And yeah, it's going to be a uh, fait accompli, as we say in French. They are going to catch this break, which uh, just a few kilometers ago looked like they may have a slim chance. But no, it is going to be a finale for them here. They'll be able to uh, bow out as it's going to go down to the top sprinters of the main field. Yeah, let's see if there is an attack. Yeah. Last ditch, yeah. Last ditch attempt by attempt by the young 18-year-old Van der Wolf. And Why there not? is a Nothing little bit lose. of a gap. Exactly, and uh, Simone Boilard is on the on the wheel as well. Simone looks like she's still having a lot of strength, a lot of power on her legs. Look at that, Fouquenet is not there anymore. Uh, Van de Ville and uh, um, the other rider from Sudal Quickstep, unfortunately, wasn't able to uh, follow the pace and the, uh, well, the pace of the attack. Oh, they're back. Th yeah, this is interesting, Oli, because it's the two youngsters, Ruchi, the mountain biker, and Van der Wolf, the 18-year-old, with Simon Boilard. And it looks like, I think it is the Loto Destiny uh, rider. Yeah, right there with them, doing uh, all the work, trying to stay at the front once again. Not an easy task, Mickey Dox. And it, no, it is now Catherine de Klerk. Yeah, and with this shot, we see that uh, it's just a matter of time uh, before they got cut uh, by uh, the field. The field is uh, uh, bringing up the, the pace really high right now. We've been riding for almost three hours, and the average, pace, the average speed is 41.9. So great work. Ah. Another attack <laughs> here. Lenny Ritchie. Yeah, Noel Ruzzi going again from the AG Insurance Next Generation U23 team. She's been very impressive here today. Two youngsters right there driving the pace in this women's professional race. Just fun to see. Promising for the next generation of riders. And Simon Boilau from Quebec City holding on tight there. That's pretty crazy. It's it's all the next generation in front of the race, like you mentioned. Yep. Two riders of uh, two riders, uh, 18 years old, uh, Van der Wolf and Roichi, um, Fukane and uh, oh no, sorry, it's uh, the cleric. And Simon is only 22 years old, and the clerk is 21 years old. So those riders has been showing some great strength. Right now is the clerk on the radio, saying to uh, her, uh, the rest of her squad, uh, prepare the other sprinter because we're gonna yeah. get cut momentarily. <laughs> yeah, we're trying, we're trying, but hey, it's not going anywhere. Well, and once again, Rochi is gonna take it uh, for another little stretch. Van der Wolf just right there on her wheel, emulating every pedal stroke. Voila, also. But it is but a matter of time. They're trying to get their 15 seconds of glory here, Audrey. But it's going to be uh, done in a few meters as here comes the peloton. We are under nine kilometers to go. And uh, the teams are lining it up. So chapeau, uh, ladies. An amazing uh, very, very gutsy performance here, trying to take it to the end. But uh, SD Works are there now. DSM on the left-hand side. Also, Team Jaco Ulula with the purple helmets. Probably uh, looking at to bring uh, Tenniel Campbell, the athlete from uh, Trinidad and Tobago, into the mix. Uh, she was uh, hurt her knee really bad at the uh, Caribbean Championships back in October. Early. This is her first race, per se, uh, back into the mix today. Yeah, that's good to see her back. And I'm pretty amazed that SD Works didn't touch the front. Um, 
only like it was 8.5k to go and that was the first time that yep. we've seen uh, sd works in the front uh, dsm was there uae was there uh Seret is it as well as live racing so sd works again was just quiet smooth calm and they were just waiting the right moment and now it's an important moment because this is the last couple of sector after that they will have some uh, sharp turn like i mentioned earlier so at 3.5 there is a really sharp right turn so that's going to be important to have all your squad uh, protect the uh, sprinter the designated sprinter and also at uh, 2.5 k there is another sharp right turn and after that it's a long straight line um for the pure sprinter 1.4 k uh, all the way to the line so it's important now field is all back together uh, pace is really fast and all you have to do is protect your sprinter prepare your last um, little girl uh, and make sure they are there all the way till the end to fight against each other yeah and uh, this is where things start to uh ramp up this is also where uh, the anxiety level also starts to ramp up as uh, the roads once again in this section of the race before we get to the wider portions for the finale are pretty narrow and still a bit of cobbles to deal with granted they aren't cobbles that we uh, have on most of uh, the uh, flandrian classics no hills per se and uh, once again, we have three or four different teams showing up at the front, doing the work. Team DSM, they don't have Vibis in their ranks anymore, but they are definitely, or have definitely their sights set on the victory today. Charlotte Cool, probably their des designated rider here. That's for sure. She is able to beat Lorena Vibis, not a lot of... A rider has been able to beat her and she did it twice this year. Also for SD Works for sure, Lorena Vivas is the sprinter to watch out for. Uh, Live Racing, we're going to keep an eye on Raquel Barbieri, Chiara Consoni for the UAE squad, also Martina Finanza for the Seratizit team. Those are the big sprinter, the biggest, the strongest sprinter that we're going to have to keep an eye on. Oh, up there still Phoenix de Canac, Team DSM on the right side in black. The multicolored jerseys to the left side. And here comes Teniel Campbell right there for the Team Jaco Lula. Team the tall Trinidadian coming to the forefront. And uh, right now it's anybody's race to win or to lose. And you can just see what they... The women looking left, right, right in the center there. Maggie Coles Lister wearing the Canadian Champions jersey just behind the DSM black jerseys. Yeah, it's, uh, it looks like uh, she has uh, her squad working uh, for her. So uh, as we uh, said earlier, Maggie Coles Lister could easily uh, be able, could really do something great uh, today. Uh, that's not going to be easy, that's for sure, but she has the strength to uh, rivalize against the best sprinter in the world. She showed it this year, and also she spent uh, the past two years uh, mostly uh, concentrate on the track, but now this year she's uh, racing on the World Tour level and she's doing great, actually. Yep, the three-time track world championship medalist she has a junior world title she's the canadian road champion also a woman from british columbia and look at the speed with 5k to go they they are now motoring it is all out now for the finish line and the victory of this 2023 women's shell de Prix. Last fine-tuning for some of these teams for Paris-Roubaix this weekend. And now this is uh, SD Works 
that taking control 4.6 K to go Malen Hoyser wants to have a little bit of help right now they will use two riders in the front and they will uh, keep uh, their key rider with Lorena Vibus just to have them um, save their legs to uh, towards the finish. And uh, that's going to be a little bit chaotic because, as we said, uh, this is going to be flat and they will have uh, a sharp right turn coming up. So everybody knows it and everybody, I'm pretty sure, had this... Uh, um, important mention from their team director you have to be in the front at the 3.5 3 uh, K mark and so everybody has this uh, uh, info on their radio so everybody's trying to move up at the same time look on the right side uh, team DSM is trying to to move up but it looks like they are a little bit um, uh, uh, spread out in the field as compared to SD Works, who are just totally in control on the right side of the field. Yeah, this is a, a dominance right now. But we're used to seeing this uh, type of work being done by this team. Lorena Vibes, Misha Bredevol, Barbara Guarici, Marlon Reusser, Femke Marcus, and Loneke Unekin are in their ranks to bring one of their riders to the victory today here. Well, look at that power. Look at that strength. SD works totally in control. The full squad is there protecting Lorena Vives, who is looking to get a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back victory at the Shell de Press. That will be amazing to see that. But watch out for a great sprinter in the field. Maggie Cole's Lister is still there, approximately in the 15th spot right now. Uh, there will be a lot of great sprinter. I don't quite see the DSM squad with uh, Charlotte Cool. She's going to have to move herself uh, back up. And there is some yeah. riders totally on the right side now. That doesn't look great for them. That should not be happening. Should not yeah, be happening. That no, I think they uh, actually uh, went wide there to stay out of trouble. There is one rider from DSM about sixth wheel there. And yeah, the riders are taking the wrong side of the road. They're more of a bike path and they seem to have tried to squeak back. But it is all team DSM right now. 2.3 kilometers to go. Look at this. One, two, three, four, wow. five. And they put uh, actually maybe even six riders. I was trying to figure it out there, getting a last perspective as they turn. I but this is. I think I saw a crash. I'm not so sure. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. But like you mentioned, a full squad is there for SD yeah. Works. And look at that speed. Everybody is uh, using their gear, their full gear, 53 11. And look at that. The cadence is so high. It means what we have. We are uh, more than 55k an hour right now. And uh, Marlon Royce has been taking a pull for like 2k now in the front. Yeah. Well, the two time individual time trial silver medalist at the World Championships. That's what her motor is capable of doing, is just driving this pace a kilometer and a half. But seventh wheel right there, Audrey, is Maggie Coles Lister, the Canadian champion. She is still right there having uh, some problems. She's now just dropped back a few wheels as she got boxed in by some of the UAE team. But uh, she was right there. She's right behind the Team DSM member. Yes, you saw it well, Randy, and everybody is fighting to be on uh, Lorena Vives wheels. That's the place to be. We know she's the fastest uh, sprinter, so I believe Charlotte Cool is there as well, like you mentioned, from, uh, for a DSM. Maggie Cool's Lister is well placed, well positioned as well, and we're going to be under the Flam Rouge in few meters now. Yeah, we are coming up to the red flame, indicating that the all-out sprint should happen after almost three hours of racing. Who will it be? Vibes. Will we have Consoni? Cool. Who knows? Maybe Maggie Coles Lister. And it is Team SD Works. They've dropped a few riders. 
SD Works still in the front for Lorena Vives wearing the uh, European Champions jersey. Right there in third wheel is Maggie Coles Lister on the right hand side. Charlotte Cool probably right up there for Team DSM. Here goes the sprint. Phoebus launching from the right hand side. She is going to try to take this with about 100 meters to go. Watch out for Charlotte Cool. It looks like it's going to be Lorena Phoebus for a third season in a row. Oh, what a finish, and we knew she was going to be the strongest. And what an amazing race for her. Three years in a row winning that wow. race. That cannot get better than that. That is what we call consistency, Uri. And uh, it was a sprint that took a while to get going. And look how the field is just splintered over this last kilometer and a half. But Lorena Vives uh, getting the job done with Team SD Works. Controlling this and race at the finish line. Wow. Yeah, and she looks, uh, it looks easy. She make it look so <laughs> easy when she wins a race like that, when she wins a race like that. And uh, she started her sprint approximately at 200 meters to go. She still had one teammate left. And that was a crucial moment because at some point I thought this teammate should stay there as long as possible so Lorena Vibas is not forced to, to launch too early. And that was time to perfection, honestly. Yeah, and it was a close call for Charlotte Cool, who was trying to take over the duties of leader at uh, Team DSM. Looks like she's second. I'm curious to see. I'm looking. Where did Maggie Cole's Lister end up? Maggie... Yeah, Maggie having a fantastic race here today. Wow. She was right in the mix only until the last maybe 200 meters. Oh, exactly. That that was not easy when uh, we're going to see a D a replay. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, Vibes started her sprint 150 meters approx. Look on the right side from DSN. Charlotte Cool is trying to uh, accelerate and pass Vibes. And completely on the left side, we saw that Chiara Consoni was uh, in the mix as well. She looked strong. She looked like she faded just a little bit bit before a D a finish line but uh, that's the sprinter that we were waiting for we knew that uh, would be in between uh, those uh, athletes Cole's Lister was trying to uh, position yeah. herself pretty good uh, pretty good job from her but um, unfortunately she uh, lost a few wheels uh, at the end she needed to be right on Lorena with his wheels and look at the distance in between the first and second we're gonna see it momentarily that was uh yeah a full um almost a full wheel in front of charlotte school charlotte cool so uh vibes dominating uh, again with uh, her squad sd works well, Maggie uh, chose the right wheel. She was right on Charlotte Cool's wheel, uh, who was on Vivas' uh, wheel with about 150 meters to go. She got a bit boxed in on the right-hand side of the screen, but still, I think, uh, eight places is what I counted as we had the slow-mo. So it's going to be Vivas, Cool, and Consoni. So Consoni uh, UAE still have a bit of consolation here. Not a victory, but a third place. Yeah, that's uh, that was uh, made for a pure sprinter. That doesn't disappoint. And uh, Lorena Vibes now uh, all smile. And uh, it's another victory on the books for her. <clears throat> Rackley uh, Barbieri was uh, fourth. She uh, was in the mix as well last year um, on the podium. So that's great to see her uh, in fourth place. Well, there they are. Vives, Kuhl, Consoni, Barbieri, Fidanza, Martina, Bolova, Schweinberger, Maggie Coles, Lister, the Canadian champion, Tacy, and Paternoster are your top 10 in that group. Very close finish, but once again, Team SD works unbeatable with a third year in a row. The three-peat for Lorena Vives. 
And that's a uh, 24 victory for Team SD yeah, crazy. Works. Yeah, 224 victory, so uh, that's uh, a lot, and uh, that will not stop now. That will continue uh, like this because the season is young. Yeah, we are only but the first week of April. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> well, what a battle this is shaping up to be, however, for Paris-Roubaix this weekend. That is going to be something. Uh, it will, and... Uh... That's for sure, Arena Vibes uh, has been uh, a big uh, sign up for SD Works. And that's also why Lotto Kopecky is always launching early now because they always keep that card with uh, Lorena Vibes uh, back in the field. And if Lotto Kopecky got, uh, um, if they catch Lotto Kopecky, but they always still have this option with the sprint. So they have all cards to play as the works. And uh, definitely they are they play their cards uh, pretty well since the beginning of the season. Yeah, Van Vleuten uh, mentioning this week that uh, her and the movie star squad are uh, really watching a lot of video footage and uh, trying to see how they can out play and outsmart this team SD works but uh, Lorena Vibes let's hear what she had to say je kwam een ideale wedstrijd verloop vandaag maar kom je net iets te vroeg op kop in de sprint nou ja dat viel mee ik denk dat het ongeveer 150 meter kwam dus het was niet te vroeg het was genoeg om te winnen en daar gaat om en het moest ook wel aangezien ja het team deed een geweldige lead out was je verrast dat Charlotte Kool nog zo nipt tegen jou kwam Nee, ik voel haar opkomen op links. En ik ben geen renser om dan mijn deur dicht te gooien. Dus uh, ja, ik neem niet het risico om haar de hek in te duwen. En uh, daarom, uh, ja, ik voel haar opkomen, maar het was genoeg. Ja, het was genoeg. We zagen jou in de laatste drie kilometer dat de ploeg berenwerk verrichtte. Ook daarvoor al perfect wedstrijdverloop. Ja, zeker. Uh, we stonden weer met een hele sterke ploeg aan de start. En we nu hebben nu echt laten zien dat we echt een hele goede lead-out neer kunnen zetten. Het voorjaar is van jullie, nu Parijs-Roubaix. Ben je daar ook op vrouw? Uh, nee, dat, uh, Lotte wil heel graag die wedstrijd winnen. Dus ik uh, ga haar graag ondersteunen daarin. Dikke proficiat met jouw zegen. Bedankt. Well, Audrey, I don't know how your Dutch is, but mine is not very sharp right now. <laughs> so, unfortunately... Mine uh, either. Yeah. So we'll... Uh, basically be able to say that they are satisfied they are ready i got a few things knowing a bit of german you get to pick up some <laughs> some of the dutch uh, uh, conversation but definitely uh, they uh, were saying that they were ramping up for paris roubaix and this was just another step towards a successful event on saturday Exactly, and it looks like uh, she was happy uh, of uh, the lead out that she had as well. And uh, we saw that it was pretty great lead out because uh, she had someone uh, all the way till the last 200 meters. So that cannot get any better than this. Well, this is the moment it materialized uh, where uh, Van der Vel and Simone Boilard took it to the group. Then came once again Amandine Fouquenet and company. They were to be five Audrey in the first initial break and others were to follow. Yes, and Simone was uh, the one uh, pushing it to uh, maintain uh, and to create the gap that uh, went up uh, to uh, 1 minute to 20 um, on uh, the field. So it was great um, to see that because uh, she looks like she, she's in great shape and uh, she's uh, ready for uh, to battle against the best uh, in the world. And I said Van der Velle, uh, Ron, I'm sorry, it wasn't Van der Velle, it was uh, Simone with other company, but Van der Velle and Rootsie did come and join them about 15 to 16 kilometers later and then after that they will uh, grow their lead uh, all the way up to uh, almost a minute and 40 seconds and initially initially it was a uh, de clock and voila that uh, mixed things up a group of seventh was formed and well that lasted up to the last 10 kilometers and it was the youngsters uh, 
uh, once again uh, doing the work, Van der Wolf and Rucci to hopefully stay away. And we had Simon Boilard gladly joining in, but it wasn't to be for that Canadian today. Then it was all the work by done by Team SD Works for the two-time winner looking to three-peat Lorena Vibes. Charlotte Cool was staying towards the front. However, not much organization as a lead-out train for Cool. Maggie Coles Lister, the Canadian champion, was right in the mix up until the finale. And Vibes, with uh, about 200 meters to go, just put the foot on the accelerator. Consoni and company weren't able to hold her wheel. Cool will pick up second, Consoni third. Yeah, and when she stepped on the pedal, uh, Arena Vibes, uh, nobody can do anything about it. The power she can transfer to the pedal and she has a really strong upper body and that makes a big difference when you sprint like that. Um, she uses uh, her upper body to uh, transfer the power directly on the pedal and she's one of the only rider who uh, is uh, working at the gym during the season and that's not easy to do because uh, they are always traveling um, to the hotel and that's not easy to find a gym so she's uh, she said that recently in an interview and that shows that uh, she can uh, stay very powerful towards all season long yeah and there's always that very finite very very uh, thin line between um, what we call you know that that power to weight ratio where yes you want to build up the muscular group but you don't want to put on too much weight because you'll just be uh, uh, basically eating in to your speed well that completes our 2023 women's shell de prise here on flow sports we wish you a wonderful afternoon and we'll be seeing you next week for more racing